Carlo Parlam and Jose Luis de los Santos of the Dominican Republic. Here is Parlam, 25 years of age, lost in the final in Tokyo to Britain's Galao Yafai. As I say, that was at 52 kilograms. He's now operating at 57. Suffered a shoulder injury in Busto Arcisio at the first World Qualification Tournament. Showing little sign of that here. He looked comfortable in a 4-1 points victory over Armenia's Arta Bazayan yesterday. And before that, he avenged his defeat in Italy to Turkmenistan's Shukur Ovazov. But Jose de los Santos, Jose Luis de los Santos, a useful boxer he showed yesterday. A unanimous decision yesterday against Li Cheng Wei from Chinese Taipei, who was brave and showed so much heart but didn't quite have enough. But uh, De Los Santos, who turns 21 on Tuesday, has already beaten the good Chinese boxer Liu Ping. And uh, this should be an interesting contest. Absolutely. Round one. Fascinating to see any time an athlete moves up a weight category to see can they carry their power, does it suit them? And I certainly, we saw that with Palam. It's very adept and comfortable at the 57. He's going to have to be at his best here. Villa Santos behind that southpaw rangy jab. I was actually just thinking about Team India as we watched there. I think the, the physiotherapist will be working hard over the next 24 hours. It'll be a, a call for ice in Bangkok for the <laughs> Indian team. Just a bit. We've said, you know, quick turnarounds in, in a lot of these classes. These two just sizing each other up in this first round. That's good from Parlam. He just caught up with his man there. Yeah, Parlam's carried that speed up across the weight categories and he's stepping in with those shots. The Filipino, very adept. Midway through round one, Parlam just ahead, although neither man has done too much scoring. I think those brace of right, right hands for the man in red. There's another one on the way through, but good use of the shoulder there from Villa Santos. Sees it. Covers up. See Villa Santos now trying to find his range with the jab. There's the sort of shovely uppercut into the body of Parlan. Carlo Palam quite wary there of the range that he has to get into, so he's timing it. That shot there is the one he's waiting for. Good response, though, from De La Santos. Have an elbow drop there from De La Santos, trying to extricate himself on the ropes. the Philippines such a boxing mad country fair bit of pressure on Parlam to deliver here oh, you're right as he comes to the end of the round of course his pressure is the, the privilege of the best fighters so can he turn it around here and get one round on the board he was good value 10 nines across the board and no doubt about that. So now it's up to De La Santos to change it up. There was that two, three right hands in the end in that exchange, and, and that was probably the biggest contribution. We see a couple of body shots from Parlam, and there was that right hand again. And, and that was probably it for the first round. There wasn't that much action, and we probably saw it all there in the highlights reel. 
Thanks to the camera operators and directors for grabbing that because, as you can see, that little flurry to the body, not really scoring, but the two big right hands making a difference. For De La Santos to make a difference, it's a tall order because his height is not suiting him. He's not been able to work at range. The reason for that is the patience of Palam. He's happy to wait and then spring when he's ready. So De La Santos doing a lot of work to close off the ring, which is something that he's not used to being the taller man. The taller man would always love to counter the smaller man coming in. So to change things up, he's going to have to go with punches and bunches. Oh, Punching the bunch there came from Parlan. Nice one, two. Hard to recall more than one or two scoring shots from De La Santos so far, although he has just switched to the body. Yeah, not a bad idea. He switches attentions to the body. A couple of them, as you said, probably landed a bit low. The referee lets it float. The reason for that, Carlo Palam, stock steady, strong. Maybe a low one of his own there. Keep it up, the call from the ref. Oh, it's just tripped over. His own feet, or was that over Palam's No, I foot? think he, he stepped on Palam's foot and tripped the light knot. So fantastic. Didn't twist his ankle, though. Trying to cut down the ring for Palam. See, very light on his feet. And the reason for that is get very, you can see the power in the calves pushing himself around the ring. It's very comfortable at the weight. Had him in the corner momentarily, but Harlam too quick and too clever. 45 seconds to go in round two, and it's not a dissimilar pattern to the first. It's not a shed load of activity, but there is a really solid right over the top from Parlam. Best shot of the round. Oh, and there it is again. That is the danger for the Southpaw. Carlo Palam, the, the right hand, the great equaliser, but it's also, it's the timing. He's waiting and then he's, he's surprising De Los Santos every time. And as you rightly said there, despite the best efforts of De Los Santos, a nice little shot to the body at the end, but the Filipino saying, yep, I can deal with this. And he did very, very impressive work there from Palam. And he's been rewarded with 10 nines across the board once more. So he's two points ahead on all five scorecards going into the final round. It's been a, an efficient display from Parlam. You mentioned the patience, and that's a big part of it. He's not wasting energy. He's not being drawn into a battle. He's just picking his punches. And that, what you're talking about there, is absolutely key. He's been calm under pressure and he's picking his moments and he's picking his punches. And of course, by way of contrast, we've, we've spoken about De La Santos. What can he do to change things up? I think it's more now about what Carlo Palam can do if he wants. He can put, inflict more damage. But as you've said there, that economy of movement, that intelligence. We'll just see the professional work from the man in red. Now De La Santos, knowing he needs something big. Put that more than half a stride forward to try and get Parlam, and he's got him in the corner, but Parlam moving his head. <laughs> Little dance moves as well from the Filipino fast footwork. But you're right, De La Santos has just decided to squat down and see if they can trade their way in this opening part of this final round. And it's his only hope now because he's so far behind on the scorecards. 
and this probably isn't in his nature uh, like like we said with Kim in Q earlier against Amit Pangal this isn't what he'd want to do ideally yeah but desperate means desperate measures yeah absolutely desperation for the Dominican at the moment and I tell you who's not interested in buying into it Carlo Palom staying out of it working when he needs to and every now and again just sends a little reminder across to the blue corner like so superb boxing from Palam and it helps in a tournament as well especially when you've got so many bouts in, in such a short time if you can avoid getting drawn into a a war of attrition or a real slugfest. He's been able to dictate the pace, fight his own way, although that's a good combination from De Los Santos. Gives him a bit of hope and he strides forward. Yeah, I think the benefit for Carlo Palam is that not only has he seen all of these tricks before, he's done all of these <laughs> tricks before. Now, De La Santos swinging from the hip. Harlem, sure he knows the situation on the scorecards and just needs to stay out of trouble. He's got 36 seconds to survive here. Yeah, you're right, it's survival mode and it's just match management. Controlling the bout here, De La Santos, to his credit, has done what was needed. But he's looking for Palam to trade with him and hopefully catch him as they're both punching together, but slim chance of that happening. There's the 10-second clapper. Time almost up for Jose Luis de los Santos. <laughs> Carlo Palam is an old trick as they do. If someone swings and misses, you look off into the crowd to see <laughs> where, it went. where did that punch go. <laughs> Carlo Palam doing that one there. Smiles all round in the Filipino camp. Good value for the win, Palam, and he'll go through to the quarter fights. Beg your pardon, the semi finals tomorrow against Sachin Siwach, and that should be a really good contest. But it's going to get the decision here first as we wait for. The Dominican Republic corner to remove De Los Santos's gloves. And you mentioned Sachin Sewich. It's about recovery now. Palam's had a, a straightforward yep. but comprehensive victory. Sewich the other way around. The winner by unanimous decision in the red corner representing Philippines, Palam Carlo. Unanimous decision for Carlo Palam. We'll see him again tomorrow in the semi-finals. He gets two bites at the cherry. And even if he doesn't beat Sachin Siwach, he'll go through to the box off on Sunday. But I'm sure he'll want to get it done tomorrow. So will Sachin. And based on what we've seen, you'd give Sachin a chance against anyone because he's a, he's a very talented boxer. What happens now, as you know, the two men, Sachin, will still be in the back of the call room just packing their stuff up get ready to go home and there'll be a little look across to say <laughs> oh it's you okay I've been expecting you so they know the level and neither man will take a backward step unless they want to the difference and the difficulty that Carlo Palam will feel is the bodywork from the big Indian he loves to put the power in how much can he recover between now and then that will be crucial De La Santos actually won that 